Welcome to Lesson 1 in Unit 16, Pinball Wizards. In this lesson, students will work to answer the question, what causes the pinball to start to move? In this lesson, students review how pushes and pulls can make objects move. They investigate how different pushes and pulls make the pinball move and use evidence from their investigations to describe how force can be exerted to cause motion. Students figure out in order for an object to move, a force must act upon it. Objects in contact exert forces on each other. Students are introduced to the problem and make connections to the storyline by gathering evidence to identify the cause and effect relationship between force and motion. They use their evidence to identify forces exerted in a pinball launching device and think about how to launch the pinball in their own games. There are several opportunities for ELA cross-curricular connections throughout the lesson. You can look for specific standard connections in the Unit 16 Teacher Guide. This lesson will take approximately three days to complete. You'll begin the unit and the Lesson 1 Engage portion by introducing students to the anchoring problem. You'll project a letter from a carnival committee for students. In this letter, students are tasked with creating a pinball machine for a carnival. You'll read it aloud or have students read it together as a shared reading. Be sure to see the noted opportunity to attend to equity should the provided anchoring problem not be compelling for your students. Students will find the anchoring problem more compelling if they can connect to it personally. If you want to change the anchoring problem for your context, keep the following questions in mind. Is it going to be relevant to my students' lives and or particularly engaging to them? Is it going to motivate students to want to explain how forces are exerted between objects in contact, how magnetic force is exerted between magnetic objects, and how interactions or movements caused by balanced and unbalanced forces? If desired, students can choose to create another carnival game that uses forces and magnetism at the end of the unit. You'll then ask students questions about the problem the carnival committee is having and what students are being asked to do. You'll pair students up to brainstorm and ask what they need to know about pinball in order to make a pinball machine with at least one trick. You'll then play a pinball video and allow students to turn and talk to discuss their observations. As students are sharing their observations and questions, you'll provide them with the sentence stem, now I am wondering about, to model how we can use observations to develop questions. You'll ask students, what do you notice about the pinball game? What do you wonder about the pinball game? Once students have their individual questions, you will guide them in sharing those questions and creating categories for their questions on the class driving question board. Once categories are created, guide the class in collapsing categories into bigger categories that have closer alignment to the driving questions provided in the unit. Do not answer questions at this time or correct student thinking. They will explore their questions and explain this problem throughout the unit. Here are examples of driving question boards from other K-5 units. They depict the students' questions in categories, some along with a drawn model from the unit. Some driving question boards are simple lists of questions or groups of sticky notes posted on chart paper. Teachers and students can manipulate and move around questions and label categories together. You'll show students the diagram of a pinball machine and put students into pairs. You'll have them brainstorm to answer the questions about the components of a pinball machine and how the pinball might be launched to start the game. You'll allow students to turn and talk, then share a few answers with the whole class. For the explore portion of the lesson, you'll put students in pairs. You'll pass out the mini pinball games for students to investigate and make observations about the launch mechanism. 
They'll circulate and listen for student discussions as they describe how they are getting the pinball to move. You'll then have students practice using the launcher and draw what they observe in their Launching a Pinball student journal page. For the explain portion, you'll bring the class together and lead a discussion about students' observations from the investigation. They can use the Launching a Pinball student journal page to share their ideas. Use the provided questions to guide your discussion around the question, what causes the pinball to start to move? The goal of this class discussion is to analyze student data and identify where forces are exerted in the pinball launching device. Use the discussion to create the Lesson 1 summary chart. From the discussion, students should understand that they will need to apply a force to get the ball to start moving. During the discussion, you can post and discuss the force vocabulary card. You'll then introduce the book, Forces Make Things Move. Use the read aloud guide to ask students questions and continue the summary chart discussion. During the discussion, you can post and discuss the exert vocabulary card and the contact vocabulary card. For the elaborate portion of the lesson, you'll have students practice using the launcher and draw what they observe in their designing pinball machine student journal page. Students should draw how they think the mechanism works and use arrows to show how the launcher and pinball are moving. They will come back to these force drawings throughout the unit. For the evaluate portion, you'll partner students up so they can share their drawings with each other. You'll have students explain how the forces are exerted in their design to get the pinball to move. They can take turns giving feedback and asking questions on how their launching devices work. You'll have students think about how this information might be useful in designing their games. To support student sense-making across the unit, orient students back to the driving question board. Ask them, what did we learn about how the pinball starts to move? And what new questions do we have? By the end of this lesson, students will have conducted an investigation to identify the forces exerted in a pinball launching device explained how a launching device uses force to create the pinball to move, asked questions about building a pinball game. In Lesson 2, students will investigate balanced and unbalanced forces. For more information about this unit, visit MySciPartners.com.